There was a point in time in my life where I found that I literally just could not get myself to move. Like I could not get myself to do the things that I knew I needed to do. And I'm not just talking about regular random things. I'm talking about things that were related to my goals, that were related to the lifestyle that I wanted to achieve. Like I was so consumed with distractions and I procrastinated and I put things off so much. And I went from being in that state of constantly putting things off and just letting time pass me by to now being in a place where I literally get like all of the things on my to-do list done every single day, every single week. Like I literally figured out how to beat my procrastination. And in this episode, I'm going to talk to you about why we procrastinate, why I was procrastinating and how to overcome it. And no, it's not going to be productivity tips like you see in every other video, every other episode. Every time you look up how to stop procrastinating, it's always productivity tips. That's not what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about some serious things, okay? So welcome or welcome back to another episode of the show. I'm your host, Sensi, and on this podcast, we talk about taking accountability for your life to become the best version of yourself. So let's talk about why I was procrastinating in the first place, right? Why we procrastinate. Now, here's the thing I realized. I realized that procrastination is not the actual problem itself. It's a symptom, right? Meaning there are root causes of procrastination, of why we procrastinate. And the biggest mistake I was making, the biggest mistake we make when we want to stop procrastinating is we look up how to stop procrastinating and we watch a bunch of productivity videos, a bunch of motivational videos, tips showing you how to be more effective, how to manage your time, blah, blah, blah. But that's not actually the problem. These things are useful when you start taking action these things are useful when you stop putting things off but while you are at a point where you literally cannot get yourself to do the things you know you need to do productivity tips are not going to help you right that's what i had to realize because i would google because i was so miserable i was so done with myself i was like why am i putting things off Why is it, why why is this another week of me bringing things on my to-do list from last week into this week because I didn't do it, right? Looking at time that passed and I'm like, I still didn't do this. I still didn't get this done. Why do I keep putting things off? Productivity and time management wasn't necessarily my issue. And it's not that I was lazy because the thing is, I would look back on my life in college and I would see how disciplined I was. I would see how I literally did whatever I had to do to get things done and get things done on time, right? I saw how I managed two jobs and five to six classes up to 18 credit hours a semester while working, trying to pay for school and being the president of student organizations, right? And doing all of these extracurricular activities. How was I so productive back then? How, could, how was I so disciplined back then? But I was struggling afterwards. Like, when did I become so lazy? I remember asking myself, when did I become so lazy? And I realized that I was looking at it all wrong. It wasn't that I was lazy. You are not lazy. You are just afraid. I wasn't lazy. I was just afraid. I realized that procrastination is a symptom. It's not the actual problem itself. It's not the root cause, right? Lack of productivity is not the problem caused by procrastination. Yeah, it is. But if you go deeper than that, our fears our people pleasing tendencies, our limiting beliefs, these are the things that cause us to procrastinate in the first place. These are the things that cause us to put things off. And so once I realized that and I started working from there, that's when I was able to overcome procrastination. So now let me give you some practical tips. Let me tell you what you need to do step by step so that you can overcome procrastination and start taking action, right? And this is based on my experience. This is not productivity tips, right? So the first thing is you need to uncover your limiting beliefs. You need to figure out what is causing you to procrastinate and you need to unpack that, okay? And when I say unpack it, I don't just mean sit there and think or even journal and say, well, I put this thing off because I'm really afraid of failure. Or I'm really afraid of people judging me or criticizing me or I'm afraid of how my life would change and who I might lose in this process, blah, blah, blah. That's great. That's acknowledgement. That's just step one. 
I want you to go further and unpack that and say, okay, well, I'm afraid of failing. Why are you afraid of failing, right? What is causing you to feel that way? Or you feel like maybe you, you are a perfectionist like me. That Boy, that was a big struggle of mine. So maybe you're, you, are, you are a perfectionist like me. And I want you to think of why you are a perfectionist. Why do you think things need to be perfect all the time? Is there a better way to do things? I've realized personally as somebody who used to be a perfectionist that you cannot perfect what doesn't exist, right? Like what, what are you perfecting? What are you researching? You have, you have nothing to build off of, right? So I had to learn to adopt a mindset of continuous improvement, doing and improving along the way versus trying to get all of this knowledge and information stored up to start something perfect. Nobody starts off anything perfect, right? But I, when I was unpacking why I was procrastinating and I realized that perfectionism was one of them, I could move forward with learning how to override my perfectionist tendencies, right? To assess where it came from, to work through that, and to adopt better beliefs that would help me start taking action. And when you're unpacking it and you're figuring out what are these things that are holding you back, I also want you to do this too, which brings me to number two. I want you to consider all of the possibilities of these fears and all of the things that are holding you back. So when you talk about, let's say, you're afraid of being criticized or misunderstood by some people by taking that leap of faith and doing the thing you really want to do. I had to get to a point where I was literally like breaking down the scenarios and thinking of, if this happens, what would I do? How would I work through that? Because in your mind, when you keep it in your mind, it just like, it paralyzes you. It just creates a wall, a barrier, and you never even think to like ask yourself, is there any credibility to this thing that I'm so afraid of? right? So for example, when I said I was so afraid of being judged and misunderstood or, or having people talk about me and stuff like that when they see my content online, I had to walk myself through it. I'm like, okay, so what if it does happen? And when you ask yourself, what, it, what if it does happen? You start thinking of solutions. You start thinking of, okay, what would I actually do if this happened? And I'm like, okay, okay I would do this, that, and the third. And I'll be like, would this hurt? Yeah, it would hurt. But I would use it as a lesson just as, just as I've used every negative experience that I've had in the past, right? And I would trust that God would get me through it. And I would trust that it would be part of the process because God wants to use it to teach me something and I would learn and I would move on, right? Once I started unpacking it like that, I was like, you know, it, it made it less of a threat to me. It wasn't that I was 100% healed of these fears in the moment, but it made it less daunting because I realized that a lot of these things I could probably work through or learn through, right? So instead of just letting it hold me back and just keeping it there like as a, as, as a, a barricade, I decided to actually start breaking it down and considering what I would do if it happened and things I was so afraid of like being misunderstood, guess what? I've been podcasting for what, like three years now. That has already happened. There was a time that one of my clips went viral and people misunderstood the, the clip because it was like 20 seconds of a 30 minute episode. And they criticized me for it. They ridiculed me for it. They said things about me, whatever, whatever. And I survived. I didn't die, right? And I realized that I cannot waste my time arguing with people. And I realized this through experience because I did reply to some of the comments and it wasn't like me beefing with people, but it was more so like me explaining what I actually meant and the context of the video. And I realized that based on their responses, a lot of people had already made up their mind to come to be committed to misunderstanding me. They didn't care about what I meant. They just wanted to attack somebody on the Internet. They just wanted to argue. They just wanted to be negative. So I realized that even in that scenario, there are some people who would just never be for me. And I cannot take my time, like, defend. I, I cannot defend my, myself. I cannot take the time to defend myself or respond to every critic or everybody that does not have a good opinion about me. And that's not just online. That's in real life too, right? So in doing that, at first it bothered me for a minute, but then... 
after having that experience and realizing that and then also the fact that when that happened I put my phone down and I just went on living my life like doing things in real life I realized that I could literally just tune it out if I just turn off my comments or like block people or just put the phone down and not feed into it right I realized it was an option to feed into the negativity or I could just focus on the positive, the positive things that I'm doing, the people that I'm helping versus the people who have chosen to misunderstand me, right? So in doing the thing, you will realize that you will overcome some of these fears because some of it will happen and you will realize that you didn't die. It wasn't as bad as you thought. And that gives you more confidence to take on the rest of your fears and you will grow in that process, right? But you need to unpack your fears. You need to consider all of the things that would happen and how you would deal with them. So it becomes less of a threat and you feel more inspired to take action. And also while you're unpacking, I want you to also think of the consequences of not taking action. So I had to ask myself, I got to a point where I asked myself and I said, what is the consequence of holding on to these limiting beliefs and these fears? And I realized that it would literally be my life how it is right now with how I feel about where I am and what I'm doing manifesting three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years from now, however long I'm alive. I realized that if I let my fears and my limiting beliefs, if I chose to hold on to them and prioritize them and put them first and consider them before I took action, consider my fears before I did anything in my life, I realized that how I feel right now, being so misaligned, being so disappointed in myself, being so unfulfilled, always having to deal with that whisper, that voice telling me this is not what you are supposed to be doing with your life. I realized that me choosing my fears over my goals, over taking action towards my goals, I was committing to feeling that way for the rest of my life or for as long as I decided to procrastinate. I was committed to being out of alignment and feeling like I was betraying myself for another five years. I was committing to waking up and feeling like that way in 10 years. And I, I thought about it and I was like, I literally feel like I cannot do this for another year of my life, let alone five or 10. So I have to do something about it. I cannot let these things hold me back. I have to do something because I was not willing to deal with that consequence, right? So I want you to consider the consequences of your inaction years down the line. And I want you to ask yourself two questions. Number one, how much time have I already spent putting things off? Between the time where you had an idea or you had clarity on what it is you were supposed to be doing and now where you, where, where you haven't taken action, how much time has been in that gap? of your inaction that's the first question how much time have you spent putting things off and the second thing is how many more years of your life are you willing to commit to doing the same thing and then living with that consequence of feeling like you're betraying yourself or that you're out of alignment and looking at other people who are take, taking a leap of faith and taking action and creating the life they desire and then just watching them live their best life while thinking, I wish I could do something about my situation. That's the second question. How many more years of your life are you willing to commit being in that position? And I realized that I, I, like I was done. After I, after I did that analysis, I was like, I was done. I do not want to keep living my life like this anymore, right? Sometimes you just have to be honest and blunt with yourself. So that brings me to the third point on how to stop procrastinating, which is I want you to ease into those things you know you're supposed to be doing in a way that works for you and where you are right now and your fears. Meaning, let's say you feel like you are being called to create content online, right? You might have fears of putting yourself out there you might have fears of being judged you might have fears of being seen you might have 
fears of being criticized, whatever it is. If that is your fears, but you know that's what you're supposed to be doing, I want you to do it in a way that you can still kind of play into these fears, but you would take action. Meaning if you have to do it anonymously, or if you have to make a private page or a new page that nobody that you know follows and start posting your content, do it that way. Let me give you an example. That is literally exactly what I did. When I got the idea for my podcast, I put it off for three months because I was like, absolutely not. I do not want to create content online that is not me. I like my privacy. I don't want to put myself out there, blah, 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 blah. When I finally decided to answer the call, because it just would not go away. I, I, I just could not get rid of that little whisper that kept telling me, you need to start a podcast. This right here is not what you're supposed to be doing with your life. Start a podcast. When I finally decided to answer that call, guess what? I made it anonymously. I my my I only did audio at the time, no YouTube. But when I started my podcast, I had on on Apple I had a white background with the name of the podcast, Secluded Thoughts. And then you know how it tells you, it asks you what's the name of the host. So you have the show name, and then you have the host name. I had secluded thoughts by secluded thoughts. I didn't have secluded thoughts by Sensi. I had secluded thoughts by secluded thoughts. The thumbnail was a white background with the text secluded thoughts. That is how I started podcasting. On April 4th, 2024, 2021, I believe that was my first time I released an episode. That's how it was. You can't see it now because I changed it. But when I started, that's how I started. I, I'm not sure if I even introduced myself or I said my name. Or maybe I did, but even if I did, I was fine saying it because nobody knew I had a podcast. That's what I did for the first eight months. Eight months, I podcasted. I put an episode out every week for eight months. And nobody I knew knew I had a podcast because I was so afraid of putting myself out there. But guess what? I developed a routine that would allow me to be consistent I learned the process. I learned how to edit. I, I got a new mic. I was gradually upgrading my equipment. I was getting comfortable with podcasting, getting comfortable with a flow, finding my voice and doing all of these things. I was learning. But because I still had that fear there of putting myself out there, I didn't let it stop me. I did it anonymously. And then as I put out more content I started to feel more comfortable in what I was doing I was like this is really good this is actually good content right so then I told two people I told one person then I told another person I told my closest friends I was like yeah by the way I have a podcast right and I and they listened to it and they were like you know this is so helpful blah 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 cool 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 but it's like even when they told me they would listen to it I would just feel some type of way like you're not listening to me don't listen to me I just said it so I can like have one person know that I did it and get over that hump of secrecy, right? But there were probably a total of less than five people in my life for the first eight months that knew I had a podcast. For eight months, every week, did not miss an episode. Less than five people knew that I had a podcast and I was probably getting about five downloads a month or per episode. I was probably getting like around 20 downloads per month, about five, four or five per episode for eight months. But I didn't look at the numbers. It wasn't about the numbers. It was, a, it was about the fact that I was being obedient and I was afraid. So I started doing it in a way that I could still take action and not let my fears hold me back. And then it was only on December 31st, 2021, at the end of the year, because I started getting inklings right or it's, it was literally God telling me you need to like put yourself out there and like let people know like I'm not telling you to do this so you can do it in private so on December 1st December 31st 2021 I shared my podcast on my personal private Instagram for the first time eight months after I started podcasting I publicly announced to the people that I knew and people that followed me on my private page that I have a podcast. 
It took me eight months to build up the courage. And guess what? When I posted it, I, it wasn't like I stayed on the app. Like I posted it and I ran off the app because I was like, oh my God, people now know I have a podcast. All the things I said, all the personal things about me, these people are going to see, blah, blah, blah. That was me, right? I had to ease into it in a way that would work for me. A lot of people who create podcasts nowadays or platforms, they may not struggle with the same fears that I had right? They may not struggle with being seen. So they can start something and immediately post it on their pub, their, their private page, tell all of their friends, tell all of their families, be very vocal about it. That was not me. I had to ease into it in a way that worked for me based on the fears and limiting beliefs that I had, right? It was my way of taking action despite having those fears. And then Gradually putting myself out there, overcoming my fears in the process, becoming more confident, learning and getting better and then saying, okay, let me take another step and tell more people. And then later on, I'm like, let me take another step and create an Instagram and share the clips. Then I'm like, let me take another step and put the clips on TikTok. And then I was like, oh my gosh, let me start a YouTube channel and put my face to it so it's not just audio and here we are today right and we only we only grow and we only getting better but that's my process and i've learned to cherish my process and not look at what other people are doing sometimes we get so caught up looking at what other people are doing it doesn't matter if somebody can start something and tell the whole world if you are afraid to tell the whole world start it and don't tell anybody Wait until you, you build the confidence in yourself and in your work and then tell people. Ease into it in a way that works for you, right? You have to start taking these small steps to start taking action. You will grow in the process. You will learn in the process. But ease into it in a way that will help you still take action and start learning but it might not be on a grand scale like how somebody who's more confident would start doing that thing whatever it is you don't have to take the leap yet you don't have to jump yet maybe you can just take a step maybe you can just put one foot in the door or one toe in the door maybe you just slightly shift your leg like one inch or one millimeter right do what works for you you don't have to do you don't like some people can just put themselves out there if that's not you, don't try to force yourself to do it. Yes, you can do it and then you can have amazing growth from that, not just externally, but internally with the confidence of putting yourself out there. But if that's just so daunting for you, please, if you need to do something anonymously, if you need to do something and not have your name attached to it, then do it that way. Focus on your own process, not what, not what people who are doing that thing, who have been doing it for 10 years and who are amazing at it, not what they're doing and how that looks compared to you, right? Focus on your own journey. You would not be listening to me right now if I didn't ease into it and take those baby steps, right? Do it in a way that will work for you. So that's number three. Number four is stay close to God. I've realized that when God asks you to do something, when there is something, when you have that whisper that keeps telling you, this is not what you're supposed to be doing with your life. This is what you're supposed to be doing with your life. That is God. That is the Holy Spirit. And if he asks you to do something, he will give you everything you need to do the thing. We might look at ourselves and be like, well, I'm to this. I'm to this. I'm not enough of this. I don't have it. I can't do that. If he called you to do it, if he gave you the instruction, that means you have everything you need, right? You might be looking at level 10 of that thing. He's just asking you to be on level one right now, right? He has given you everything you need and he will give you everything else that you need along the way. And there will be times when it's hard. Anytime you have to step outside of your comfort zone, every time you have to start taking action towards something that you really want, towards becoming the best version of yourself, it's going to require a different version of you. It's going to require growth. It's going to require to step outside of your comfort zone. And that can be very hard. And there will be hard times. There might be negativity. There will be obstacles. And God, in my, ex in my opinion, God is the best thing that can get you through all of that right? He will give you instructions and he will also help you carry your burdens. 
So it's very important to develop a relationship with him and to deepen your relationship with him through this process when you decide to take action, when you decide to start easing into things because it's going to be a journey I'm not going to lie to you. There are going to be ups and downs. Anything you have to become a new person to achieve, there will be trials and tribulations, okay? The key is not leaning on your own understanding, but leaning on him instead. I would not have developed the level of maturity that I have now without him. I would not have been able to get through this process without him. I would not be able to have all of the wins that I've had privately behind the camera without him so i'm telling you it's a necessity like it's not an option it's a necessity okay trying to get through life on your own is very ghetto so that was the first four now the fifth and final way shameless plug is i actually created a program that will help you do everything that i just mentioned so that you can overcome procrastination so i literally created workbooks that will help you unpack all of these limiting beliefs and reflect on people pleasing tendencies if you have them like i've had them sometimes you want to take action but we're afraid of disappointing people we're afraid of letting people down we're afraid of all of these things how people will see us so literally your people pleasing tendencies your limiting beliefs your fears fear of failure fear of uncertainty fear of success even which i've experienced too I literally have workbooks that will help you unpack all of that and then reframe them and develop a more positive mindset to start overcoming these things and taking action. And then there's also an action plan that will help you start taking action. And that's where we get into some of the pro productivity tips, but it's also about helping you clarify your goals, create smart goals, and literally all of the things that I do to make me the most productive that I have ever been in my entire life. So I wanted to be very intentional about this because I realized I come on the internet and I tell y'all all of these things about becoming the best version of yourself and duh, 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 duh. but I realized that what a lot of people struggle with because y'all have told me is actually taking action, like taking the first step, doing the things that you know you need to do. It's not always a lack of clarity, it's that you know what you want to do but you just cannot seem to do it. Whether it's because you're distracted or all of these limiting beliefs that I mentioned, like there are so many barriers between you just taking action that holds you back. So I literally created a program that is designed to help you do that. So you can click the link in my bio to find out more or you can go to secludedthoughts.com slash blueprint. Y'all, I'm so passionate about this because... I, I just like I don't want to make content I don't want to keep making content telling you how to become the best version of yourself or like walking you through the process and being open and honest about my process and then you're not actually taking action because you're struggling with procrastination right so let's get that out of the way so we can start transforming our lives okay so that is all I have to say today in this episode and I will talk to you next Sunday